Hi, my name is Shane Young. I've been a SharePoint MVP for 11 years and the principal consultant for Bold Zebras. In today's video, we will start with a Windows 2012 R2 server and we will create three additional 2012 R2 VMs using Hyper-V. We will fully patch all three VMs, make one of them into a domain controller, and then join the other two servers to the domain. This will provide a platform for the subsequent videos where we will cover installing SQL Server 2014, installing SharePoint 2016, connecting the domain to the Azure AD, connecting SharePoint to Office 365, and all kinds of other crazy fun. Woohoo! I will also do a version of this whole series but using Azure Infrastructure as a Service or IaaS, but that will be later down the road. But before we can do any of that we need to work through uh, these basics of this video. Also, because this is the internet and I am certain people will have feedback on things I should do differently, be sure to check the YouTube description for this video. Any changes or boo-boos that I would like to tell you about in the video will be commented out in the description, along with links to other videos that will follow on in this series. And if you're really brave and want to read what everyone else thinks is wrong with the video, you know, like my hair's too flat or I should have a better skin complexion, all, all very true information, um, then read the comments. But you've been warned, they can be a little crazy. Cool? Okay, then let's get started. So here we have one of my physical servers. It's a pretty simple box. If we open up Task Manager here, we can see that it has... Um, 16 gigs of RAM, currently about 14 gigs free, and it's a single uh, CPU with six cores, 2.87. So, mm, I wouldn't even call it middle of the road, but you know, for a box sitting here in my basement, it's not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take this, it's already a uh, machine, I've already added the Hyper-V installations to it, so what we're going to do is we're going to start building out some of the Hyper-V um, capabilities and add our VMs. So I'll open up Server Manager, and from Server Manager I'm going to click on Tools, and then I'm going to click on the Hyper-V Manager. We'll give it just a second to load up, and we'll go ahead and close out Server Manager because we won't be needing that for a while. And as you can see that right now in Hyper-V Manager I don't have any VMs except for my QuickBooks VM, but we're going to ignore him, and we're pretty much starting with a blank slate. So I'm going to say I want to do a new, and then I want to do a new virtual machine. And it's going to say, hey, what do you want to name this virtual machine? I'm going to call it Domain Controller. And it's going to say, where do you want to store the virtual machine? Well, I don't want to put it in the default path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse over here. In this particular PC, um, it has several different hard drives. So one for the C drive. Um, and then the D, the E, and the F. And so this is actually going to work out well, right? That way I have my system, all that stuff running on C, and then I'll put each of the three VMs that we're going to create on a different hard drive. They are, um, if I remember correctly, they're 10,000 RPM hard drives. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty decent old guys, so not terrible, but they, aren't, they are not SSDs. I wish I uh, had upgraded them, but I have not. So we'll choose a D drive here, and then we're going to say um, create a new folder, I'm going to call it Domain Controller. And then we're going to say Select Folder. So that way all the pieces, all the components of this particular VM should live in that folder. So it makes it clean up easier uh, down the road. So click Next. Uh, generation 1 or Generation 2. So the Generation 2 stuff has some better security enhancements and other fun things in it. Um, I've actually found that patching uh, VMs, you have to turn off some of the capabilities of the Generation 2. So I'm going to use a Generation 1 VM, uh, right? This is not a production, this is a test environment, so I'm going with the path of least resistance, not the most secure, not the most up-to-date, but just the path that works the easiest. So I'm going to use Generation 1 for this uh, test environment. So say next, how much memory? Um, we're going to give it um, 1,024, so 1 gig of RAM. Um, in a perfect world, I'd want my domain controller to have a little more RAM than that, but as you saw, we've only got about 14 gigs free, and SharePoint's a pig. So the more we can save for SharePoint later, the better, so we'll just do uh, 1024. So let's say next, we need to connect it to the network. My machine only has one virtual network. Uh, it only has one network card in it with one network connection. Once again, 
that's not a best practice. Best practice would be we'd have at least two different network cards, one for the host machine and then a second network card for uh, all the virtual networking. But, you know, we'll live with what we got today and uh, proceed forward. So say next. And here you can see that it's going to put our VHDX file in the D location that we specified earlier. That works out good. That's what we wanted. It's going to set a maximum size of 127. Yeah, that all works. So say next. And then we're going to say we want to install an operating system from bootable CD or DVD-ROM. So we're going to click that and we're going to say image file. I'm going to browse. And so on my D drive right now, I have a June 2016 download, which is funny because it's July, but you know, what do you do? Um, and so this is the file that I downloaded earlier. And what this is, just so we're all keeping up, is that I went out to um, Bing. Yes, I actually use Bing, not Google. I know, it's crazy. Uh, but here I went out to Bing. I typed in Windows Server 2012 R2 trial. And then the results was try Windows uh, Server 2012 R2 over on TechNet. And so if you click on that link and you wait patiently, good thing I loaded this ahead of time, uh, you'll see that they have a lot of different software with different evals for you. And so I'm using the Windows Server 2012 R2 and you'll need to sign in. And if it's the first time you've signed in, they're going to ask you for a uh, to just do a brief little survey. It's like 10 questions. No, it's, not, it's not even a survey. It's more of you know demographics on who you are, what you're doing with it. Um, anyway, this is going to get you free access to the 180 180-day trial download. Um, you can also with the uh, the download, you know, it's about 4.4 gigs, so it may take a little bit to download. So kind of plan ahead of time for that. And you'll also see once you click through this, they're going to offer it to you. They're going to say, hey, do you want to, do you want the ISO image? Do you want a, a VHDX that you just load up in Hyper-V directly, or do you want to do it on Azure? Um, I went with the ISO because I like to have and build the VMs and know what all is there. What I found a lot of times you use the VHDX is that they've pulled down. You've got to kind of go and make sure they didn't install something or they didn't you know, uh, do X or Y. I don't know. There's just a lot of variables there. And since this is a video about installing um, Windows Server 2012 instead of not, uh, I thought it'd make more sense if we went that route. But you're welcome to try their VHDXs out if you want. Um, your mileage may vary. So anyway, this is where I got the file from. All right, so we've selected it here. It's got this weird name. Uh, your name will probably be slightly different as well because I think they kind of rev them as they go. So we'll say open. We'll say open. There we go. All right, so we want to install Windows from that file. So we'll say next. Hey, is everything good? Cool. Yes, it is. We'll say finish. And it's going to go and configure everything for us. All right, so then there's my VM. So then I'm going to double click on it, get the cute little pop up here, and then I'm going to hit the power button to turn it on. Then what we should see is it pops on. Right, it's like, oh hey, loading some files, right? It sees that it has an ISO installed, so the same as if you'd booted off a CD-ROM or a, probably more practical these days, USB uh, drive, right? I guess you can't even boot off a CD. It's got to be a DVD. Ugh. The world is changing too fast. I'm getting old, people. I'm getting old. All right. So this is what language do you want? Um, what type of, you know, the keyboard layouts and that type of thing. So for me, all the defaults are correct. So I'm going to say next. And then I'm going to say install now. Setup is starting. Dramatic pause. All right. So then here we get to do, uh, we need to get to choose what do we want to do? Do we want to do the server core installation or the uh, server with a GUI? And so we're going to do the uh, standard evaluation server with a GUI. Because in order for SharePoint to run and do all the fanciful things that we need to do and do demos, uh, right, um, we're going to make this a lot easier if we have a GUI to do things. So we'll say next. I highly encourage you to read through all of this. All right, good reading. Next. And then it's going to say, hey, do you want to upgrade, install Windows, and you know, uh, upgrade? Well, there's nothing there to upgrade. So we're just going to say do a custom install. Where do you want to put it? Once again, because it's a VHD, there's just one magical 127 gig hard drive there. So we're going to say next. And 
And just like that, we are off to the races. So the good news is I'm actually going to pause the video until this is done so we don't have to sit here and watch this together. So hey, you'll be back in half a second. I'll be back in about five or six minutes. Okay, so thanks to the magic of the pause button in Camstasia, you can see that it's finished and so now the machine's automatically going to reboot itself to kind of uh, finish up all that magical work that it just did. But there's the CD-ROM uh, skipping this time, right? Saying, hey, I don't need you anymore. I'm going to just uh, load the operating system. Yay. And nice little windows, a little happy blue color, little spinny wheels. Life is grand. Well, life will be grander if it'll hurry up and finish, won't it? Now you can see it's getting devices ready, which is really just its way of saying, hey, I got a little more work to do. And we like to spread it over lots of tasks to complete to 100% instead of just one big task because that'd make our lives too easy, right? The good news is I'll edit out as many of these pauses through here as I can. So if you feel like when you're watching the video, you're like, man, it really jumped ahead all of a sudden, that was on purpose because I cut out the uh, dramatic pause. Okay, and so now you can see it's brought us to a settings screen. It's like, hey, I'm creating this user named administrator. You need to give it a password. Now, I would recommend you use a highly secure password, unlike the password that I'm about to use, which is my good friend, pass at word one, pass at word one. The good news is that these VMs are A, test VMs in a test environment. B, they'll never see the internet. So in theory, no one should be able to get any access to them. So let's just cross our fingers and hope everything works out. All right, we'll click finish. Once again, we're gonna finalize my settings and bingo bango we're now at a login screen all right so that gets our domain controller set up so now we need to repeat this process both for what will be our sql server and our sharepoint server so we're going to jump over to hyper-v manager and we're going to say new again do a virtual machine and for this one we'll do sql server and we'll choose where we put those files as well browse now we put the domain controller on the d drive so we're going to put this one on the E drive. There's already a folder called SQL, so we'll call this SQL Server to try and avoid confusion. We'll say select folder. Next, we're going to go generation one again to avoid any of the weirdness and the security uh, pieces. So next, and for RAM on this one, oh, I really want to give it lots and lots, but it doesn't work out. Uh, the math doesn't isn't very good, so we're going to do. 4096. We all know that SQL Server likes to cache as much as possible, and 4 gigs is not going to make it terribly happy, but you know, this is a real world example. I've got to make do with the machines I've got, so it is what it is. So we'll say next. We're going to make sure it's connected to our uh, same network. We'll say next. And then we're going to uh, let it use the hard drive. It's going to create it for us. It's going to put it on that E drive, so that's good. Next. Install an operating system from a file. We're going to use that same Windows 2012 image. So say next. It all looks good. So we'll say finish. And then we'll double click on this, which will open up a little pop-up window like so, and we'll hit power so that one can begin. Um, this time we won't do it, right, because we've already done one. Uh, we'll do this one a little faster and that we'll skip all the magical steps. And I'll just jump straight over here. We'll do new virtual machine. And we'll call this one our SharePoint server. We'll say next. Oh, no, we won't. We will click the box here, right, because we don't want it on the C drive. We don't want it on the D drive or the E drive. We want it on the F drive because that's where we have our space. So we'll say new folder. That DC folder, that's from an earlier project I did, so that has nothing to do with the domain control we created earlier. Don't want any confusion, so we'll call this one SharePoint Server. We'll select that folder. We'll say Next. Generation 1, say Next. And so for this one, uh, let's see, we will try roughly 8 gigs, a little less, right? Um, and when we go to start it, we're going to find out whether or not we have that much RAM left or not. Uh, the window Windows will complain if it doesn't, so we'll say next. Put it on the same uh, adapter. Next. 
Actually, you know what? Let's go backwards. Previous. You know what? We're going to set this to 16 gigs, which is way more than this machine has. Oh, it, it laughed at me. It said you can't do that. We're going to set it to 12 gigs, okay? And the reason I want to do that is I want you to see the error message, and then we'll backpedal to get it to work. So that way, if you run into that problem at home, you'll uh, know what to do. So we'll say next. Uh, there's our network adapter, so we'll say next. Our hard drive over on the F drive, so we'll say next. And we'll select our um, ISO file again, so there's that guy. So next. All right, that's all good. So finish, double click on SharePoint server, and hit start. Oh, look at that. who would have thunk? Right? So the application encountered error while attempting to change the state of SharePoint server. SharePoint server could not initialize, not enough memory in the system to start the virtual machine SharePoint server. Okay, so I wanted, we wanted to do that, right? We went backwards so we could get that on purpose. So we're gonna say close. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to five, um, yeah, we're going to go over here because it's much easier. So we're going to click on SharePoint Server, and then here is Settings, right? So make sure that it says Settings below SharePoint Server, or above, yeah, Settings below SharePoint Server. So make sure you're on this one. And then we're going to go over here to Memory, and we're going to try changing this. And so now we'll try our 8000. So we'll say OK. We'll double click again, and we'll hit Start. All right, still not enough memory. So once again, we'll go to settings, memory, and we'll try 7,500. I actually forget what the magic number was that worked. We'll hit start again. Oh, and this is why later on you'll say, why is Shane's VM so slow? It's because I don't have enough RAM. <laughs> One physical server with 16 gigs of RAM is not enough to run a multi-server SharePoint farm, is the moral of the story. But hopefully you've got more RAM at home, or like me, you just persevere um, with what's going. So the virtual machine server is starting. Yay, we were able to get it with uh, 7,000. So I set that off, that way we'd kind of work through the process and see the errors. Um, all right, so uh, the domain controller is happy. The SQL server, right? We're gonna need to work through that. So next, install now. The SharePoint server right here, next, install now. Um, and one other thing, why those two are starting up, I wanna just talk about again. So you noticed that I um, put each one on a different hard drive, right? So the domain controller was on D, SQL was on E, and SharePoint was on F. Now that only helps you if you have separate hard drives, right? I have four physical separate hard drives in this machine because one of the biggest uh, bottlenecks in virtualization is always going to be disk I/O. So if you had all four of these guys or all three of these VMs running on one hard drive, you know you're going to have a lot more performance problems than even me and my little bit of RAM. Um, so you want to try and have as many disks as possible. That just gives you the best disk I/O, which is going to make your VMs run ha faster, which is going to let SharePoint be happier, SQL be happier, etc. Um, you know, once again, this is a real world. You kind of got to live in the constraints of what you have, but just keep that in mind and know that that's the reason I made those choices. It's another one of those reasons that we'll do. Excuse me, we'll do a series later on uh, Azure. And the Azure series, right, we'll be able to create using infrastructure as a service out there. So we don't, we'll be able to use the right amount of RAM. We'll be able to use the right amount of uh, disk I.O. And we won't have all these issues. But for today, we're going to have some issues. So we'll close out of that. Uh, you can see, once again, both of these are waiting on me to choose the operating system. So we're going to choose um, with a GUI. All right, you're going to be really weirded out if you don't uh, check the right box there. Say accept the license terms. Do a custom install on that partition space. So that one's off and running. Well, next there, custom install, a next there. All right, so those two are now uh, running through the install. The good news is that over here, our domain controller was done, right? We finished that earlier, and thanks to the magic pause, you didn't have to worry about it. And so what I'm gonna do 
now is I'm going to uh, log into it. So hit the little uh, control delete equivalent button up there. And I'm going to type in the password. I'm going to do pass at word one. We'll wait patiently while it installs, or not while it installs, while it uh, logs in. Right, the system's really busy right now. Uh, you know, it's doing there's two different installs. We got so we got some uh, CPU traffic. We know we're maxed out on RAM. We got lots of uh, disk traffic going on. So lots of fun stuff. Uh, and you want to find PCs, devices, connect to this network. Uh, so this is a work network. So we'll say yes. That's fine. All right. It's logged in, and what will happen here in a moment is server manager is going to appear for uh, this box. All right, when server manager comes up, it'll get loaded, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say configure this local server. We're going to wait patiently again because we know that the poor little server is doing lots of work. And so now there's a whole bunch of little stuff that we have to do that's just going to make ourselves more successful later uh, if we kind of knock out all these things up front. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and change my computer name. So I'm going to click on the computer name and I'm going to say change. And we're going to name this DC Demo. Why? Because I don't know. So we'll say OK. You have to restart for that to take effect. All right, well, we're not going to restart right now. So we'll say OK, say close, we'll restart later because we're going to do more, a few more of the little things first. We'll go over here. Uh, so I always turn off the IE uh, security enhanced stuff, right? Because I get really annoyed when I try and browse the internet from the server for whatever reason, and uh, it doesn't work. So real servers, real security production, OK, maybe not for my demos uh, and for my little VMs. I'm going to turn it off. So say OK. Um, we're then going to go up here to updates. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to say let me choose my settings. And so with updates on VMs, I always do, you're allowed to check for updates, but let me choose when to download and install them. I also say give me all the extra updates. And the reason that I go with that particular set of selections is you just never know when you're going to be demoing this VM, right, and some massive patch is going to come out, and all of a sudden your bandwidth is going to grind to a halt, right, maybe a resource constraint anyway. It just letting machines automatically download updates um, for tests or demos is just a really bad idea. I can't tell you how many times I've been on stage and it's that particular problem's gotten me in the past. So I've learned my lesson the hard way. It can check for updates, it can tell me about updates, but the downloading install is going to happen manually on my part. Uh, so while that's checking for updates, I'm also going to go over here, and I'm going to then um, change the time zone, right, because I am not in the Pacific time zone. It turns out the good old Cincinnati, Ohio is in the uh, Eastern time zone. So I will scroll down through here, minus five Eastern time, click OK and OK. All right, so now I've got uh, my time zone fixed, I got my uh, machine's names fixed, and the updates are starting to come flying down. So we will close out of this for now. So that's got to do updates. This guy, so server one and SQL, they are both uh, still installing Windows Server um, as well. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to pause the VM for a minute and when I come back I w should have um, both the SQL Server and the SharePoint Server logged into Windows and I'll le I won't mess with the domain controller until we get back. So pause, here we come. Alright, so we've gotten back here. Um, and we're at the point now where both of these VMs are prompting me for the password. So I'm going to just use pass at word one again. Pass at word one. Use the old speak there. That's a great invention. Whoever thought of that at Microsoft, thumbs up. So I'll say finish on that one. And we'll switch over to the SharePoint one. 
same deal, pass at word one, pass at word one. We'll say finish on that one. Then we'll go over to the SQL one, we'll hit control alt delete and we'll type in pass at word one again. And finally we'll go over here to this guy and we'll say pass at word one also. All right, so when those two get logged in for the first time, what we'll do is we'll switch over to our domain controller. If you remember when we left uh, moments ago for you, minutes for me, um, we left where it was searching for updates and you can see that it has found 1,670.5 megs worth of updates. Yay, this is the unfun part about building new VMs. So what I'm gonna do is we'll go ahead and say install updates and let it start running. I'm going to jump over here. Do you want to allow uh, this machine to find servers on the network? We say yes for the domain controller, so we'll choose yes for this one. And we'll switch over to the SharePoint VM, and we'll also say yes for it. All right. So that gets these. Uh, so we've got this guy installing updates. Switch over here. We'll kind of pull the SQL Server a little more down so he's a little easier to get to. Pull this guy up a little bit. Well, SharePoint because he'll be our important one later over here to the side. All right, so on the SQL server, um, we're going to hit configure this local server. And just like we did with the domain controller, we're going to hit uh, change its name. And we're going to change its name to SQL demo. I like a demo. Oh, now I'm concerned. Did I make the lowercase or uppercase the last time? Anybody remember? You probably do remember. I don't. So I'll open up Server Manager again and ask myself how I did it. Local server. His name was. I thought I did lower. Okay, so lowercase. Right, and that name change hasn't taken effect yet because we still haven't rebooted that box. All right, so SQL demo lowercase over here. Click OK. You must restart, close, we'll restart later. Then we're gonna go over here, we're gonna turn off the IE enhance stuff, say off, click OK. We're gonna fix the time zone. Where's Cincinnati? It is in the Eastern time, oh, that is not Eastern. Eastern time zone, click OK. And then we'll go to updates. Let me choose my own settings from the drop downs, check for updates, but I'll install them. Give me all the fancy extra updates. Click OK. All right, so there's that. So that one's off for checking for updates. We'll configure the SharePoint server. Same thing, computer name, change. We'll name him SP Demo. All right, we need to restart, close, we'll restart later. Scrolling over, we'll say for IE security is off. Time zone is right there. Click OK and OK for that. And then we'll go over here and we'll say, let me choose my settings check for updates, give me all the fancy updates you find though. Alright, so that one's checking for updates. Oh, let's close out a server manager, we don't need that right now. So this one is downloading about 8 million updates. This one's still checking for 8 million updates. And this one is also checking for updates. Alright, um, so even though I have a hundred megabit per second download, for whatever reason, uh, these updates take a really long time to download and install. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to uh, pause the video and we'll be back when all the machines have had all of their updates. So I'm going to do updates, it'll finish, I'll have to reboot, I'll check for updates again, it'll put more updates on, it'll reboot, right? And I'll probably repeat that cycle a few times, but I'm going to go ahead and skip all of that for the video and just uh, bring you guys back when all three machines are set with all the updates installed. Alright, fair enough.
See you soon. Whoa, my shirt's a different color. What's happened? Well, what, what's happened is that it took uh, more time to install those updates than I wanted. More like it took two, two days, you know, whatever. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to wallow. Uh, what we are going to do, though, is we're going to notice, if we look at all our VMs, they're now all fully patched. Yay! And so then in the future, they will automatically notify me when there's new updates. These VMs are only around for 180 days. I'm probably not going to ever patch them again, but at least we know we started from a good, happy place today. All right. Um, so while I was fighting through all of it, and I'm just closing the update windows to, I don't know, because I like to close windows, um, one of the things I realized the step that we skipped earlier and was part of all the slowness was that I didn't adjust the number of CPUs for uh, Hyper-V. So what I'm going to do now uh, is we're going to actually increase the amount of CPUs that each of the VMs uses. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to shut down our VMs. File. Uh, start. Shut this one down. And actually, I'm just going to shut down the um, SharePoint and the SQL because I, the domain controller, when me and it were fighting, I adjusted its CPUs already, so I cheated. All right, but so now that we've got them shut down, I'm going to open up Hyper-V Manager. So hit the start, start typing Hyper, and then there's Hyper-V Manager. And so when this opens up, I'm going to go to the SharePoint server. I'm going to double click on him. Oh, I'm not going to double click. I'm going to single click on him. And then down here, I'm going to go to settings. Remember, just the same way where we adjusted the memory earlier. I don't know why it didn't spark the idea to do the mem or the processor, but it did not. So right now, it's using one vCPU. Part of the reason installs have been taking so long. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump this guy up to four and say apply. And then I'm going to go to the SQL Server and settings again and processors and four. That looks like a four. My screen's really tiny and my eyes are getting bad, one of the two. Um, and then if we go to the domain controller, we're not going to change him because he's running, but you can see that I changed it to two earlier. Um, so most of you are pretty good at math, so four plus four plus two is um, ten. I almost said eight. Uh, four plus four, four plus two is ten. And my machine only has six CPUs. Uh, we showed that in the very beginning. But Hyper-V is actually going to kind of virtualize those and manage that for me anyway. So I figured, hopefully, you know, SharePoint's man uses a lot of CPU or SQL's man using a lot of CPU, but they don't try to both fight and use all the CPU at the same time. Generally, you'll see that type of behavior where the, uh, the heavy lifting is done on one side of that equation or the other. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, oversubscribe and let Hyper-V kind of manage the, uh, the tussle between the two machines. All right. So we will start SQL back up. We will start SharePoint back up. And we will also just go ahead and close out a Hyper-V manager. All right, so when these come back up, Windows is pretty smart these days. You know, in the very olden days, probably before many of you were born, we used to do this, you know, changing from one CPU to two was like a traumatic thing. Nowadays, Windows is like, ah, I got more resources, yay me, um, and so it's a pretty, pretty benign uh, transaction, which is good. All right, and so while those two are booting up, um, the next step in our process here is we're going to go ahead and set static IP addresses for all of our virtual machines. It's not required, but it cuts down a lot of confusion and a lot of hiccups later if your virtual machines do end up with different IP addresses, uh, especially the one we're going to make a domain controller. It does not take well to uh, not being itself anymore. All right, so I'm going to go down here to the night network icon. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open network and sharing center. And yes, there's about seven ways to get here, but this is the easy one for me. Um, and then I'm going to click on Ethernet. So that's our actual network. And then we go to properties. And we're going to see all the fun things that are running. I'm going to go to TCP IP uh, version 4. And I'm going to do properties here. And I'm going to say, hey, let's make this IP address. And this is just the internal IP address on my network. So Make sure you're using your own at home or in the office. 255, 255, 255, and zero. 
and my default gateway is 10.0.0.1 and then uh, for my preferred DNS server I'm actually going to use 127.0.0.1 on this machine you're probably saying why in the world would you be doing that actually let's not do that yet that's what it's going to be here shortly we'll set it to our network DNS server but when this machine becomes a um, Active Directory domain controller. It's also going to become a domain. Uh, it's also going to become a DNS server for the domain, and so it'll reference itself because that's where it's going to keep all the its own DNS and schemas. And so then the other two boxes, we're going to want to point them here for DNS once it's all said and done. All right. So 10.0.0.1. Say OK. Close. Close. All right. And then I'm going to just make sure I can still get to the old fanciful internet that'll tell us that I have not uh, botched up the networking yes yes use the recommended settings no one cares let's just go to Bing tell you people I actually use Bing there we go Bing opens we know we're good and yeah quit tell me about the error messages alright so that machine is good uh, so SharePoint or the box that will be the SharePoint server booted up so we're gonna log into him and our SQL box also. Pass that word one. All right, so we get those two guys uh, loading up. Switching back to my domain controller, we've actually made it now to the process or the point in the process where we're ready to uh, promote it to a domain controller and um, get our domain established. So I'm going to open up Server Manager again. I'm going to wait patiently for Server Manager to open. It's also what's booting up over here on these guys. And then we're going to say add roles and features to this box. You get a nice little wizard. We're going to say next. And we're going to say role based feature uh, based installation. Yep, so next. The local machine, so next. And then what we're going to look in for in here is we want to do Active Directory Domain uh, Services. And you will see this says, hey, I'm going to put all these other things on for you. Great. Thanks. So we'll say add all those. We will say next. We will uh, just take the defaults here as well. So next and next and uh, click install and we'll go ahead and say um, restart automatically so that way when it finishes if I'm not paying attention the machine will go ahead and reboot so yes so install alright so that will start the process that will install all of the uh, necessary uh, components to make AD work and then when it gets done uh, we'll reboot and then we will DC promo uh, this box and we'll establish actually what the domain is and all that fun stuff Okay, so while that's running, I will switch over to SQL Server, and we're going to go ahead and set up the IP addresses for it as well. So we're going to right-click on Network again, open Network Sharing Center, click on Ethernet, say Properties, find TCP IP4, Properties there, and so here we're going to go 10.0.0.61. Two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five dot zero, ten zero zero one, and so then for DNS, uh, this one we are going to use ten zero zero uh, sixty. So we're pointing it at the domain controller. Now, right now, DNS isn't running over there, so we're going. We're essentially going to break uh, this machine for the moment. We won't be able to find anything on the internet because DNS will be down because it's not set up. But that's okay because we don't need to do anything with this VM right now anyway. So we're closing out of that. All right, so that one's good. And then we'll switch over to our friend the SharePoint server. And as you probably have guessed by now, I should right click, not left click. Right click there, open network. Uh, click on Ethernet. Click on Properties, TCP IP4, Properties, all right, and then 
zero zero sixty two and then ten zero zero one and finally ten dot zero dot zero dot sixty right pointing at the domain controller because that's where all of our uh, magic happens click OK close close yep see no internet access because can't get the domain controller sorry alright so we'll close that um, so those two guys are ready so the next step for these two uh, machines will be to join the domain uh, but clearly the domain hasn't been established yet so we're just going to hold off on uh, any more changes on those two and so this one is still installing um, the feature it looks like so while that's going on we will just return to our magic land of pause again so that way uh, shorten the video and I'll come back as soon as um, it reboots right because it's going to reboot on its own as soon as it uh, finishes installing all these because that's what we told it to during the process so alright I'll be right back Alright, good news, I'm wearing the same color shirt, so it's only been like a minute. Yay! So you can see this finished up. It didn't automatically reboot, so I thought I would just click through the screens with you. So we'll hit close. And then what we'll see is that over here, it's like, hey! I did that thing you asked, but I still need more work done. So I'm going to look at this, and it says, I need to promote this server to a domain controller. Oh, well, good idea. Alright, and apparently it needs my help for that. So we're going to click OK there. Or not click OK, but click on the link, and it should fire open the uh, configuration tool. I like how sometimes Windows has a spinny bar, sometimes it has dots, and this particular one just has the bar kind of doing the wave by hey, hey. Okay, so that finished up, so we're going to say we want to add a new forest and so for my forest no name I'm actually going to use um, shanescows.com and so the reason for that is I want it to be a uh, publicly accessible real domain because in later videos we're actually going to connect this to Azure AD so that I can get my SharePoint farm and um, Office or SharePoint online via Office 365 using Azure AD to, as a common ground for them to communicate so we can kind of have a hybrid actual farm. So even for my test domain in-house here, I need to use a real domain. It's going to make all the connections later easier. So that Shane's Cows is one that I own. It's also my Twitter handle if you didn't catch two and two together there. So next, I don't know if there's a website out there anymore though. I should look at that. All right. So then what type of uh, forest functional level? What would I like to do? I'm going to leave all that uh, as is. And for here, I'm going to use our favorite pass at word one. And we're going to say next. And clearly, when I make all this publicly accessible for the Azure AD stuff, I'm going to change all the passwords not to be what's in the video. I don't need any of you hooligans out there uh, doing bad things to me. All right. And it's saying, hey, I can't uh, find a delegate delegation zone for the DNS. What am I supposed to do? We're just going to soldier through that. So next. And it is going to uh, verify the NetBIOS name here. Make sure that there's no conflicts with Shane's cows. There should not be. There is not. Yay. So next. All right, those are all the default locations for the uh, files. Those are good. Would like to review my settings. Yeah, they seem fine. Or you at home that are watching the video saw me make a typo and you're laughing your butt off. But for me, they look good. All right, so now it is going to run um, and put all of those pieces in place for us. So it says, hey, I need to do all of these different things. You're going to have some uh, different pieces. You know what? We're not worried about it, right? We're not building production. <laughs> if you're building production, use something other than my videos. But for our test domain, everything's good. So we're going to say install. All right. So it's going to start laying things down. And I'm going to hit pause while it does. I'll be back in a minute.
or actually a second for you, minutes for me. Okay, the reboot just finished. Um, it took two or three minutes, so I went ahead and cut that out of the video. Um, so real quick, let's jump log right back in. So we'll hit Control Alt Delete. We'll log in. You'll notice now we're logging in as Shane's Cows backslash administrator. That being our domain. So what happened was it automatically took the local uh, administrator account we've been using the whole time and it made that the domain administrator. So it's using the same password, in our case pass at word one. Everything's promoted. It's all there, but the local account's gone, and so that's now the domain uh, the main domain account right now is Shane's Cowles backslash administrator. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you real quick is if you look down here under uh, network, if we right click again and open network and sharing center, Ethernet, and then properties, and then do our friend TCP IP4, you'll notice that it changed uh, the DNS address to 127.0.0.1, the local loopback. So we mentioned that earlier. Right, and that's just because now this is a DNS server, and because it's the DNS server, um, and it, it's the AD controller as well, it always needs to be able to find itself and reference itself, so it's using the local loopback, so even if the network's down, it can still function properly by finding itself. So, little change, um, Windows did that for us, we didn't have to do any of it, but I wanted to point that out because it was different. And just to confirm, so we'll close all that. All right now, if you go to Tools, You'll see we've got all the Active Directory tools here, and we've got DNS Manager. And if you're wondering how is it we can find the internet, because that all still works, what's actually happened here is if you go to Properties for, um, oh, yeah, if we go to our Properties, and what you'll see is under uh, Forwarders, it's actually forwarding all the traffic to what was the DNS server. So it knows that 10.0.0.1 is was the uh, DNS server for this machine when it had uh, its previous settings and so it's made that the forwarder so anything that it can't resolve it's going to send off there and since that's my real DNS server when I go to different websites and such uh, all of that should still work so we'll confirm that for ourselves real quick and explore all right and we'll just go to our favorite boldzebras.com Cross your fingers, yay! So everything is working. All right, so that takes care of all that. So then the last thing we need to do, and then this video will be done, is we're going to add uh, both our SharePoint server and our SQL server to that domain. So over here on the SharePoint server, I can, uh, you know, there's several different ways to get to it, but we'll open up Server Manager, and we'll say configure this local server, and then remember earlier where we changed um, the computer name, same place is where we're going to go in and set the domain. So hit that, we'll say change, and then now let's put it for domain, and we will do Shane's Cows. Click OK. It's going to say, hey, I need to log into that domain to do it, no problem. So we'll use the administrator and pass that word one. We'll cross our fingers this all works. Um, if you have errors here, and hopefully I don't, but if you do have errors, a lot of times what it is is because you can't find the domain, the Shane's Cows that you just created, and that's usually a DNS issue or a networking issue. So what you'd want to do, uh, if you get an you know, error message, it can't find it. Make sure the error message doesn't say you typed in the password wrong. But if it says I can't find Shane's Cows, then you're going to want to check um, that you can, you go into network settings and make sure the DNS is set up correctly, right? So it should be pointed at 10.0.0.60 in this example, which is the uh, D, uh, address of this DNS server over here. Um, and then you'll want to open a command prompt and do a ping, right? So command or open the command prompt, P-I-N-G, and then the IP address of the domain controller itself. Uh, one of the other issues that might happen to you here is if you set up Hyper-V, maybe you had several different Hyper-V networks or you forgot to connect this one to a Hyper-V network, if they're on different networks, you, they can be isolated and not be able to talk to each other depending on how it's all configured. So different things to check. Luckily, we're in shape. Everything's good, so we'll say OK. It's reminding us we have to restart, so we'll close. And yes, we'll restart because we need to be on the domain. So restart now. We're going to go over to this machine, uh, the SQL Server. We're going to repeat the same exact steps. So configure this local server, click on the computer name, and we're going to say change, 
and we're going to set the domain here to Shane's Cows and then administrator and pass at word one. We'll cross our fingers here. Check on this guy. He is also uh, pondering his new newfound identity as he reboots. Yep, so now you can see because it's domain, joined the domain for the first time, it's got to apply all the new security policies that it's getting from the domain, which are just the default domain policies, right? Because we haven't configured or set any of those and we won't for any of these videos. But the group policies and that type of stuff are now coming down because it's part of the domain. We can also see our SQL Server finish. So he needs to reboot. No problem. So close that out. We'll restart him. So the same thing will need to happen here. Um, this pressing a key to boot from CD or DVD, that's because the ISO image for Windows is still attached. If you want to make that message go away, right, speed things up by that couple seconds, uh, you can go over here into your uh, media, right, and then for the DVD, uh, eject the, uh, the drive. So then going forward, there will be nothing in the DVD. Your ISO won't be there, so you won't get that booting message. Not really a huge deal, but just a little trick. All right, so then I'm going to hit uh, Control-Alt-Delete on my SharePoint server. Now see, it's trying to log me in as spdemo slash administrator. That's not what we want. That's the local machine account. That's no good anymore. I mean, it's still good. It's still there and valid, but we don't want to use that. What we're going to do is we're going to log in as another user, and then it's going to default to the Shane's Cal's domain. And so for right now, just to confirm everything's working, we're going to log in as administrator. Now notice I typed in administrator and it automatically said back to SP demo because it knows that's a local account. So what you need to do is you need to put this first time Shane's cows in front of it. So Shane's cows backslash administrator. All right, so now sign in Shane's cows. That's good. So the password is still pass that word one. And we'll get logged in. Now we're using that account just to validate that everything worked. Um, when we do the later videos, so when we actually get to installing SharePoint, we're actually going to create uh, some new accounts over on the domain controller that will be SharePoint specific and we'll use those. So we won't always be logging in as uh, a local administrator, so I don't think that my videos are that far gone from practicality. But just to confirm everything is working, it's easier to log in uh, now with that one. So server manager is up. We've authenticated from the domain. I would say that the SharePoint server gets a thumbs up. It is done. And I'll look at that right on cue. The SQL server wants to log in. So same thing. It's trying to log in a SQL demo. We're going to hit the back. Other user. And we're going to type in Shane's cows backslash administrator. Pass at word one. And it looks like we're going to have success there as well. All right, so that takes care of uh, this video. So that gets us um, three Hyper V VMs, right? We've managed to patch them, which was a lot more effort than I'd wanted. Uh, we DC promoted one of them, and then we've joined the other two of the domains. So we now have a mini network uh, running here. Uh, so in the next video, we're actually going to go through, and uh, the next video will be all about installing SQL Server uh, 2014 and getting that ready for SharePoint. So. That'll be our next video uh, in the series, but I think for today we'll go ahead and call this one done. So once again, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Uh, feel free to leave nice comments below, uh, like it or subscribe to the channel so that, that way you can get future updates. And then you can always get a hold of me at, on Twitter at Shane's Cows, or you can uh, go through www.boldzebras.com uh, for all the fun consulting work that I do. So all right, guys, thanks, and I'll see you next time.